On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we're continuing our player review. We're taking a look at Victor Hedman. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam. Welcome to the show. Today, we are talking about Victor Hedman continuing our off-season player review segment. And before you go ahead and listen, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. We are available wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form and we are free and also subscribe to the channel on youtube if you're watching us on youtube you could tell that we got a whole new layout it took us a little while to integrate that uh, but here we are and i absolutely love it and and i hope you do too drop a comment below what do you think of the new setup what do you think of the new format i guess if you want to call it that uh we're we're talking about Victor Hedman today, where we're looking at his season, we're asking ourselves the question, is this the beginning of the end uh, for Victor Hedman in his career as he is sort of, I wouldn't say on the decline, I would say more so, I, I mean, it's a difficult really kind of way to assess it, this it's still very much early in his career. I think we could all agree that given the circumstances surrounding uh, what this lightning team has done over the last couple of years, looking at his season. And if you want to follow along, please go ahead, follow along on uh, hockeyreference.com. And you look at his past seasons, and, and you know this season, we could all agree, it wasn't your stereotypical season, whether you're looking at the offensive part of things or even his defensive play. Um, it was very uncharacteristic for Victor Hedman in every aspect of his game. You saw him kind of gather sort of uh, in the playoffs, at least a little bit on the defensive side, but still nonetheless – it, it it was a very frustrating season for us as Lightning fans watching him uh, really figure it out through through all these games. Um, he played 76 games this, this year, nine goals, 40 assists. That comes out to four, uh, 49 points. Plus minus was in the positive, so that's good at 10. You know, really didn't finish in any voting whatsoever, um, which is – you know, it happens, you know, this this league has gotten so much better in terms of the overall talent across the NHL at the defensive position, Cal McCarr, um, you know, there's still some of the other new, you know, Adam Fox, uh, Miro Hishkinen in Dallas, who I think is going to be a f- phenomenal, um, but Like I said, you look at Victor Hedman's season in review, and I feel like, I mean, we all know by now that he was playing hurt. Um, And, you know, know, really, that's is that really that big of an excuse? And my thing is, All right, we hear every year after the playoffs, we hear every single year, you know, this guy had a broken leg. This guy had um, a torn ligament in his knee. You know, we hear it all at the end of the year. And my thing is, is that especially, I mean, it was very, it was very apparent from the beginning with Hedman that something was off because I think at least through the first couple of months, we could all agree that there's something off about him and it wasn't just the offensive production um and and just the recap the the two previous years especially last season last season being his his phenomenal 
career year where, you know, it's unfortunate for Hedman, you know, if he went into free agency, he would have made an absolute killing regardless of what the money situation is across the NHL. But you look at his season from last year, the previous season, 82 games, 20 goals, 80 points. Um, he he looks he, he finished second, uh, third, excuse me, in the Norris, uh, finished third the previous year. Uh, has for, pretty much for the most part finished in the top three in the Norris over the last three years coming into this past season. And then, like I said, really takes a big step back. And, you know, we'll we'll talk about it more in the second segment because I think really, you know, at this point in his career, he is 32 years old, 33 till December. By normal everyday circumstances, 32 is not old at all. Only a year older than me, or I guess two years older than me. Uh, he has a late birthday, but anyway, you look at defensemen, at least the the older class of defensemen, uh, not this new class of you know the comma cars, like I said, the Aaron Foxes or even the Miro Hishkinens. Um, I think we could all agree with with this kind of old, the somewhat. I guess, older era or generation of defensemen, whatever you want to call it. These guys kind of age a little faster because, you know, they start out their careers diving in front of pucks like crazy, playing more of a defensive-oriented game. Uh, like I said, the game has shifted more to a somewhat balanced approach from the blue liner position. But you look at Vin, do we chalk this up as – you know, a step back and it kind of goes in, I think, hand in hand with, like I said, the injury thing. If you look at, you know, if, if, if the injury was such a big issue where clearly it was messing with him, not only mentally, because I think that was the biggest thing from him that, you know, guys you see playing hurt, hurt time, they could kind of just block out any pain and just do what they got to do. You know, it may not be at the crisp level, but you saw him when he was tracking down opposing players on breakaways. You know, that was always his bread and butter and always kind of the same way the Achilles heel for this Lightning team was that, you know, they do they do turn over the puck quite a bit at the blue line, but their saving grace was always 77 and getting on his horse. And going back down the other ice to save the day. Well, that wasn't the case this year. It wasn't so much really his inability to really get those first couple of lengths in his skate uh, going. It was more so just the fact that he wasn't able to really make the cuts or cut off the guys at the right time. Or it was just mental mistakes, really. And one has to wonder, is it more so maybe the end or the beginning of the decline, if that is a little bit more better to roll off the tongue for Victor Hedman, or is it more so, you know, a kind of a step in the back, step back for him in his career? Like I said, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's an interesting conversation that I think we'll continue to have with Victor Hedman, considering, like I said, he's going to turn 32. Um. I mean, I'm sorry, he's going to turn 30 in December. Coming off probably at least in my book, you know, not counting rookie seasons, but probably his worst year all around since probably 2013-14 when he was 23. And, you know, we're not going to count really, you know, I'll give him a slide on, on 2020 was shortened season. Um, and, and these guys do get hurt. It is very rare that a defenseman does play 82 games. So we're not going to read too much in the numbers considering even though he did play 82 uh, just a couple of seasons ago. But I think when we look at his season, I think that, in order to be able to give him some fair shot and not completely dump on him, we got to look at it 
singular, even if you want to just take out 21, 22 and look from 2021 and then backwards and compare that to 22, 23, you know, he's not too far off. If you want to make the argument that he had a good season, he's really not too far off his, 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 his season averages. So, you know, if I had to give him for this season, I'd give him a C plus just because I think, you know, even though he does not produce a lot on the offensive side of things, I think that, like I said, his, the, the one thing that he's always known for and the one thing that the lightning could always have been able to, to lean on him for was his defensive prowess, and we did not, we didn't see that. And I'm not going to blame him 100 percent for the Lightning's shortcomings this year. But if you look back on the season, you look back on the postseason, especially, and especially this series against Toronto, which I don't think he played terribly. He could have played better. You know, the Lightning are also used to getting more out of him in the playoffs. If you look at five games, he had three points. You know, that's, I mean, it was five games. You can't really judge someone statistically on, you know, how well they played. I mean, the only thing I could probably nitpick from that playoff series uh, that I wish we could have seen from him more of and especially during the regular season i've spoken about this all the time uh, all the time on the episode i mean on the podcast but the thing that really bothered me this year um was him unable or almost unwilling to shoot the puck when we know that is one of his best things one of his best qualities uh, especially come playoff time, his ability to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. Um, and, and, you know, at the same time, you know, everything that we could, we could nitpick or, or maybe for kind of also have to trace that back to the injury. And, and the question I'm going to ask all of you, and you can throw in the comment section and the, the question I've been sort of dancing around almost this entire segment, at least to start off the show is if it, it was that bad that it prevented him from playing the way that we would have liked to have seen him play. How come John Cooper and company after the first month or so maybe said to themselves, let's give this guy a couple of weeks or, or a month. I know it's very early on in the season. I know it's it's the Lightning were in not a very good spot to start off the regular season. But when one of your top players is clearly not able to perform at his best, you adult and step in and say, we're going to shut you down for a little bit. Let's get you back to 100% and we'll take it from there. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. You know, um, it's a tough situation. I mean, the argument can be made for both. I'm sure this is a conversation, especially if we maybe see more of the same next season. Well, it'll, it'll be a whole different conversation. Conversation that we're about to have. We'll be talking about, you know, is this the beginning of the end for Victor Hedman? We'll talk about coming up as well as afterwards. Chances of a bounce back next season also as well. But first, I want to talk about today's sponsors, and that is our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, if you haven't heard of FanDuel Sportsbook, my first question to you is, where have you been? Have you been living under a rock? Well, guess what? Come out from underneath that rock and go ahead and sign up with our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook because make a fast break to FanDuel because during NBA playoffs, right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to 2000 dollars right? That is right. That is $2,000. $500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I took full advantage of that. 
I actually put a bet right now tonight as I'm recording this. The Nuggets are playing the Miami Heat. So for all of my Florida fans that are Heat fans from the Tampa area in general, I put money down, unfortunately. I'm going to get maybe some flack for this. Uh, I put money down on the Denver Nuggets to win the series in six at odds plus 430. And pretty good odds. You know, I kind of would have figured that they would have been a little bit you know, not as good if they were kind of leaning more towards more of a short thing. I probably would have put money on Jimmy Buckets in the heat, but still uh, great to see a final, another sports final in which a Florida team uh, is is in the championship. So uh, hopefully the heat could pull it out and wrong. And, you know, maybe you could bet some money on the heat to kind of jinx me. And there's no better place than to do that at America's number one sports book. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel.com. A number one, America's number one sports book. All right. So moving on talking about, um, and if you haven't already done so, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Let's hear some talk from you. Um, let's face it, you know, he's getting old. That happens. That that happens all the time. We see it all the time. You know, sooner or later, we're going to have these conversations. I'm sure maybe next year or the year after, we're going to have more of a concrete conversation. Well, we kind of already started one on our segment. If you haven't already, go ahead. Go back to the one on Steven Stamkos. I kind of... Sp- Maybe in a while, but I'm pretty sure I kind of touched on it, uh, whether or not maybe he is sort of starting to age his way or or get closer, age his way out of his prime, maybe. You know, I, I really don't like having the conversation just because it's, you know, out of respect for these guys. I mean, especially hockey players, you, you, you see them defy logic when it comes to age, at, you know, all the time. I mean, look at look at Alexander Ovechkin, look at Sidney Crosby. Uh, look at Perry has done, you know, when he is used the right way. There's, you know, there's no, as long as these guys are put in the right spot, for the most part, they could do, you know, normally what they do or somewhat of a fraction of what they can do. And oftentimes that is just enough for, for these guys to play well and be effective. But Victor Hedman, I don't know. I, I spoke about it a little bit in the first segment. And it, it's a weird, I guess it's a little bit of a slippery slope, maybe, if we want to kind of go in that direction. Because the newer generation <clears throat> of defensemen, a little bit different in terms of maybe the the nightly <clears throat> the nightly damage that they will take and the yearly damage that they will take uh, to their bodies. Because if you look at, you know, this new class and Adam Fox is, you know, I'm going to keep saying these names for the next 15 to 20 years. So buckle up because these are the guys that are going to be some of the best players in the NHL for, like I said, the next 15 to 20 years. These guys kind of lean more towards in the middle of more of a, of a ba- balanced uh, defenseman where from Victor Hedman, I think we'd all agree he is more on the defensive side. You know, not as much as what we saw players like Eric Chernak or, you know, in years past, Ryan McDonough. Those guys kind of <clears throat> are just kind of like your, your kind of your, what's the right word? Your blue collar defensemen where they just sacrifice their bodies almost, it seems as though, on every shift. Where Victor Hedman has made a career of, you know, doing that when he's needed to, but also being able to, you know, be savvy with it. And what I mean by that is being able to to make the right decisions at the right times, being able to go out there, uh, make the right judgment calls, uh, almost as if, and it, it seems as though at times that he is seeing the play develop before it even happens. And that what that's what has made him one of the better defensive defensemen, I think, in the NHL for the 
the last probably five years, I think we could agree. Um, obviously, that these days, that's not what really wins you a Norris. It seems as though as the Norris trophy is evolving into more of the offensive uh, defenseman game, which <clears throat> if that's the case, it is it is what it is. Um, you know, my personal opinion, if you're going to give a defenseman an award for offensive production, just come up with a new one, name it the award and call it a day where you keep the Norris trophy for, you know, best defenseman where really traditionally the best defenseman is the one who plays the best defense, just like the Selkie award is awarded to, to forwards. But when we look at Victor Hedman this past season and we, and we, discuss like going back to the conversation when we look at his past season really examine what went right and what went wrong and we look at the mistakes that were made like i said you know we could look at his performance and kind of ease up on the criticism i think at least because clearly he was playing not up to 100 percent. his body was there um but my issue with it like i said is there was mental mistakes, there was turnovers in the zone, there was just not right judgment call slew of things that he just didn't do well that he normally does right. Where this lightning team could kind of, you know, fall back on that and say, all right, he's not gonna score a ton, you know, he's not gonna he's not gonna replicate what he did last year where he scored 20 goals. But at least we still have that defensive minded guy. Also, that guy who is going to be able to still be aggressive. And that was part of it, too. Uh, he was just not aggressive at all. And, and I, being aggressive is it, it's, it's not something that is more of a physical thing. It's, it's more of a mental mindset. And really, to just tie a bow on it all, his mind wasn't there. I don't think it was he was in the right shape physically, obviously, that, that, that is something that we're going to hammer home for the rest of this episode, but mentally he was not in shape. And I think that is an issue because as players, they're really the issue is that he is going to start doubting himself. And then once you see the physical uh, toll start to build or the physical mistakes start to build, the mental mistakes will start to build as well. And so I really think that that is kind of one of the tail tail signs for uh, a player who is starting to, um, you know, maybe go in to their career. I mean, really, it's still too. It's really too early to really guess or say. He's turning thirty three. You know, we could sit here and say, well, thirty three for a traditional defenseman might as well be forty. You can make that argument. I still think he's too talented. I still think that he could still go out there and perform. It's just all a matter. I think really at the end of the day, what it comes down to is that I think using this excuse because it's so much has been made of it over the last three years with this lightning team. And I'll probably talk about this with a few other players as we continue our reviews. What it comes down to, really, the I think the issue with him was just he had too many miles on the car. He just needed to pull over and rest. And what I said for guys like Stamco, some of the older players on this team, and for Andre Vasilevsky, I think that these guys losing in the first round was probably the best thing for them. And I fully expect... Um, Victor Hedman somewhat, you know, I'm not going to 100% say right now that we're going to get a 20-goal season out of him next year. But the beginning of the end, I think it's maybe a little bit too premature if we see some of the more of the same in a full season. Then the conversation could start next offseason. So wrapping things up on the show, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Like I said, we are available wherever podcasts are distributed. In audio form, we are free. We are on YouTube. 
uh, go ahead, drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel. Um, we are slowly but surely, day by day, making progress, getting to a thousand subscriptions on, on our YouTube. You haven't heard before. Once we hit that thousand, that thousand mark for subscriptions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a very special raffle. And the winner of that raffle will get a signed Vincent LeCavier lightning puck. So you make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast for more, for more information as soon as that happens. Uh, and, and if you want it to happen sooner, spread the word about the lightning pod locked on lightning pod. We'll be discussing the lightning all summer. We got the draft coming up. Not really. Don't doesn't really look like. The Lightning will make any crazy moves to get into any sort of opportunity that will afford them a good prospect or someone that we might see anytime soon. We'll be talking about free agency. We'll talk about some of the contracts uh, that have expired, uh, most notably Alex Kalorn. Is he going to be in Tampa come October? We'll talk about that. But right, right now we're also like there had been chances of a bounce back uh, for this upcoming NHL season. and. When you say comeback, when, when we're discussing Victor Hedman making a comeback or getting back to what we normally see out of him or what we expect out of him, are we looking at last year's totals where he's scoring 20 goals and, and kind of going up there, almost hitting the 90-point mark? Chances are, absolutely not. But... Are we going to see something a little bit better than what we saw this season? Absolutely. I think that he could definitely get back to his his regular averages uh, that we saw out of him because I, I think that's, you know, what you kind of saw out of him, at least offensively, is what you're going to get. Maybe the point numbers and goal numbers will be slightly higher. I still think he's talented enough to get the 15 goals maybe get around the 75 point mark. I think that is a good kind of happy medium area for him. Um, but like I alluded to in the past segment, uh, the big thing and really have been just really hammering home this entire episode, the big issue for Victor Hedman and really something that is going to be very vital to this lighting team next year. If they have any shot of getting back to the Stanley Cup final is going to be his defensive proudness and just in general. And, like I said, and I've been talking about it since I think we were still playing games against Toronto when I was talking about it. But who knows what's going to happen this offseason? Um, you know, the Lightning really need to revamp their third line defensive pairing. I kind of like Ian Cole coming back. I kind of don't. I would like to see some sort of more of a solid foundation on on that line, that anchor line. But it all starts from the top. You know, if he comes out, if Victor Edmund comes out and doesn't play up to expectations and is playing on the first line with Nick Pervix, I mean, that that's really going to – it doesn't really matter what the third line looks like because opposing teams are going to exploit that. They're going to go after Victor Hedman all the time. They're going to know. We saw it at certain points this year. The smart teams, like the Boston Bruins, they would – Go on his side of the ice all the time. You know why? Because he couldn't defend anything. They pressured him in his own zone when he had the puck, and he gave it up without a fight sometimes. So we really need to see him step up physically in his performance and the mental aspect because what we could all agree on with Victor Hedman, um, which, what is a huge part of his game, is his confidence. And I didn't see a whole lot of that this season. And but I do expect him to come back. He does have a good core around. Like he is the captain of the team, and he's got a lot of young guys on on him. Uh, and they're in the middle of a rebuild. No, it's it's you got the same group, the same cast of guys that have been winning championships um, with him. Two out of the last three years, uh, I guess. Well, now two out of the last four years, and I would expect him to get back on the horse. You know. How far is he going to gallop on that? Is he going to ride out on a pony or a thoroughbred? 
I would expect somewhere in between. Maybe that's more wishful thinking than expectations. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, are we going to see a comeback? I Like I said, 15 goals and 75 points, I think, is uh, a good stat line for Victor Hedman. I think it's a good stat line for this team. And it's a good stat line that could propel the Lightning towards once again, having aspirations of winning a Stanley Cup. So in the meantime, that's been it for this episode of Locked on Lightning Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you in the next one.